I held the fish in front of a shell and he grabbed it from my hand. He touched my finger with his tentacle and I think that we were both a bit surprised. So we both pulled back. Now the day after, I held the fish close to his shell again. This time he grabbed my finger and he tried to pull my finger inside. Now of course he's only a little octopus, but I was really surprised by his strength. I was kind of curious if he would learn and how he would learn to do stuff and I was wondering if he could learn to open a jar. So I started pulling the fish in a jar. Egbert jumped out of his shell and he went onto the jar and he pulled the lid off. I put this little piece of fish in front of the shell. He took the fish and he stuffed it underneath his tentacles. So when he had this fish underneath his tentacles, he didn't fit into his shell anymore. Egbert was sitting on top of the shell with the fish and the damn fish were trying to take it. He was punching the fish away with his tentacles. It is the funniest thing I've ever seen, this octopus trying to punch away little fish. Uh, we, we were actually laughing in our snorkels while watching him, but this was definitely the coolest encounter that we ever had with an octopus. So I decided to call him Egbert. There were loads of people snorkeling and swimming, so the first few days he got a little bit more shy and he didn't come out as much. Now after about a week, I went to look for him and his whole conch shell and Egbert were gone. I had a nightmare about Egbert with loads of people swimming on top of him and loads of fish and I was really scared that people would have picked him up and that he would have been chased away. So I swam around for a bit and in a few days I found him out of reach of the swimmers and the kayaks going over. I was really happy though that he was still around and that I found him again. At some point I gave him a uh, piece of fish and he got so annoyed with all the damsel fish trying to take it from him that he kind of walked out over the seafloor away from his shell. He spit out the fish and he swam back to this, his shell. There was a tree trunk on the bottom and I swam down and I laid in front of the trunk and he swam up to me. He grabbed my hand and he tried to pull my hand towards the trunk. He let go and he swam back. So I moved a little bit closer to the trunk. Then when he came around to the trunk again, he seemed to be pushing the trunk up. So I don't know what he was thinking. I just thought, oh, I helped him push a little bit. So I bit my finger, I pushed against the trunk. He grabbed my finger and he places my finger on the trunk. And when I push, he swims up to me and he swims back to the trunk and he grabs two shells from underneath the trunk. Basically, I was helping him hunt, but I, I didn't realize I was doing it. You can see that he's kind of clinching all this fish and all these crabs and shells underneath and he's kind of hobbling around the sea bottom. There were like four or five octopus around at the time. I just took some small pieces of fish and it was way too much for, for him. I just wanted to give him one little piece, but I put the jar there. And actually, he swam up to the jar, he opened it up and he went inside. And he took all the fish out and he just took it all. And I was like, oh, I guess there's nothing left for all the others. <laughs> I tried to see how he responds to different objects, like a cone shell or a mirror, and even my hair. But he never really responds the way that I expect. For example, he was not interested at all in the conch shell that I gave him, but he kept going up to my hand and he kept feeling my little elastic bands around my, my wrist. I went on holiday and I didn't see him a few days before. I was worried that he would not be there anymore when I came back. But when I came back, I found him. He swam up to me and he touched my foot. 